Good morning. Thank you for coming to our English session today and Sunday. So we're looking at writing. And today we're looking at writing text of an appropriate level of detail. So let's have a look at our aims and outcomes. By the end of this session, you must be aware of how text, the purpose of a text affects tone, tone and register used. Know the difference between formal and informal writing. Be aware of levels of formality. Supply supporting evidence in your writing. You should be able to attempt a tone choice in your writing and use the correct register. And you could use specialist words in your writing. So what is writing a style? So for level two, you need to be able to adopt a style of writing appropriate for the task. And this means that you need to understand the who, who you're writing for and the what, the purpose of the task. And so as you can see there from the visual, if you know the text purpose and you understand who the audience are, then you can adopt the correct formality and tone. And the combination of formality and tone is called the register. And so these are the things that we will be looking at today. So formal or informal, this is really important when you are deciding how to approach the, ta the writing task you have been given. So we're going to watch a video to help you with that. So just bear with me. Formal and informal writing. Sometimes your writing will have to be more formal in tone. For example, if you're applying for a job or writing a letter of complaint. The formality of writing depends on your audience and the message you want to convey. Think about how you would speak in a face-to-face -face conversation with the person you're writing to and then try to match that tone in your writing. For example, you would chat differently to your friend than you would your teacher or manager. So what are the differences between formal and informal writing? Formal writing is direct and to the point, whereas informal writing can be conversational. Formal writing is grammatically correct, whereas informal writing may use slang, abbreviations and contractions. Formal writing uses an impersonal tone and discusses topics with gravity whereas informal writing may use an emotional tone and often discusses topics with humour. Formal writing uses the correct punctuation, whereas informal writing may use dramatic punctuation, such as dashes and punctuation marks, or it may flout the rules of punctuation altogether. Let's look at an example. First, a formal article. The Kodiak bear is a subspecies of the brown bear. It can weigh up to 635 kilograms, making it the second largest land-based carnivore after the polar bear. Now the same information written informally. They may look cute and cuddly, but don't be fooled. The Kodiak bear, closely related to the brown bear, is a 635 kilogram killing machine. In fact, it's second in line to the biggest meat-eating animal in the world, the polar bear. Note the use of dashes and exclamation marks and the contraction of it is to its. To recap. Informal writing can be conversational, often flouting basic grammar rules, whereas formal writing is precise, factual and grammatically correct. To determine which to use, consider your audience and the message you want to put across. Formal and informal writing.
Okay, any questions about the what you've heard in the video? Okay, so formal or informal, what makes a text formal or informal? Can you, have you got any ideas that you can share with me? What would make a text formal or informal? So anything you remember from the video? Right, let's have a look together then. So the purpose. What is the text trying to achieve? So if you're applying for a job, you're going to use a formal approach. If you were writing an article, that could be formal or informal, depending on the purpose and the audience. So for example, um, an article, an academic article about um, the habitat and um, the, the habitat of polar bears in a science journal would be formal, but um, an article in a children's magazine um, about polar bears would be, would most likely be informal. Even though the subject is the same, the purpose and the audience is different. So that would inform whether you choose a formal or informal approach. Um, the audience. So if you know the person well, so you send in a text, an email to a friend, then it's likely to be informal. But if you don't know the person or they are senior to you, then the text is likely to be formal. So another example could be that you're emailing a colleague who is also a friend at work. So you would use a more informal style. But if you were emailing a colleague, your manager at work, then you're more likely to use a formal style. That would be more appropriate. The tone. So... <coughs> Informal writing could be emotional, humorous, um, but formal writing is generally more serious. Your punctuation. So formal writing should also always have the correct punctuation. But informal writing may use dashes and dramatic punctuation so often informal emails texts you might see lots of exclamation marks to add drama to it and um, you won't believe what's happened and you might see multiple um exclamation marks which is not how we should correctly use them but in informal writing that is often what we will see and that's okay but if we are writing formally we need to follow the punctuation rules And language and grammar. So again, thinking about informal writing, it is more conversational and it might use slang abbreviations and contractions. So um, you might, you'll see things like uh, that instead of that is, it's instead of it is and so on. Formal writing will follow the uh, grammar punctuation as we've discussed and language conventions so it will be precise correct to the point okay so that's a lot of information to take in any questions about formal or informal okay so you need to Unmute yourself because you're going to um, tell me for these tasks, should you use formal or informal style and tone? So I'll need you to contribute. 
So you can unmute yourself. So for the first one, an email asking for a job application pack to be sent to you. Should that be formal or informal? What do we think? Formal. Formal. Well done. Yeah. So you're emailing somebody you don't know. You want to apply for a job at that organisation. You would use a formal style. OK, so just check in. So if you have access to your microphone, you can just unmute yourself to answer. If you don't have access to the microphone on your device, you can answer in the chat. OK, so let me just get rid of that. OK, an article for a local newsletter to persuade and encourage people in your area to take part in a litter pick. So you're requesting people in the local area to take part in something important, the litter pick. Do you think that would be formal or informal? So, got one suggestion in the chat, formal. Does anyone think anything different? Okay, so yes, it could be formal. But depending on the newsletter, it could be informal too. So, if it's um, generally a serious newsletter with local serious local issues, then it could be formal. But for instance, um, it could be a newsletter from a primary school sent to or a high school sent to parents and families in the local area and that uh, asking them to take part in a litter pick in this in the area around the school and that might be more informal so you would need to probably know a few more details before you decide informal or formal for that one okay so the next task um you're writing an email to a friend asking them to join you for the weekend. Would that be formal or informal? Informal. Yep, yeah, well done. And also in the chat, we've got informal. So um, writing to a friend, text, email, letter would generally be informal. Completing an online form to complain about poor service in a restaurant. Should that be formal or informal? You want them to take you seriously and deal with your complaint? Are you going to write a formal or an informal complaint? Formal. Formal, yeah, well done. We've got formal in the chat as well. An email to your boss asking for time off work. Formal. Formal, good. And a comment on an online forum. So some of you may follow a forum for musician, sportsperson, team, um, or a subject that you're interested in. If you write in a comment on that forum, would it be formal or informal? Informal. Good, informal. Well done. Well done with that, everybody. So what's the point? So each piece of writing that you do should have a clear purpose and the style you choose will help to convey this. So, for example, the purpose of a letter in response to a job advertisement is to try to get a job or at least an interview. So that will be formal. So let's have a look at these tasks. 
and what the purpose is and again decide if it's formal or informal. So the task you're given is to write a positive article announcing the opening of a new theme park and the purpose is to persuade people to visit. So that may be appearing in the local newspaper or a national newspaper or magazine. So a positive article about the opening of a new theme park. So in the chat, we've got an answer formal. Yes, okay. So um, yeah, so you'd want a formal style there. Um, a letter to the local council complaining about the closure of a leisure centre. So the purpose is to complain and possibly persuade the council to change their mind. So if you're writing a complaint about something, you want to be taken seriously. So what should you use, a formal or informal style? So we've got an answer in the chat. Can anyone give me an answer? Formal. Formal, yeah. So you want to be taken seriously, you want to use a formal um, style for that. A report giving sales figures and forecast from your company and the purpose is to inform staff. Formal. Formal, yeah, and in the chat as well, well done. Sorry, my mouse has disappeared to get rid of that. There we go. A hotel review on a travel blog to voice and the purpose is to voice your personal opinion. Informal. Informal, well done. Okay. So levels of formality. So after you've decided whether the piece of writing should be formal or informal, you need to decide the level formality so does it need to be highly formal or partially formal could it even be informal in places so if you're writing a highly formal piece then you would be using complex sentence structures specialist words so technical vocabulary impersonal language and a serious tone so you wouldn't be referring to you or me. Um, it would be impersonal. People think that. Um, the general public thinks that. The company thinks that. Not I think that or you think that. So it would be impersonal. And examples would be a job application, a letter or email of complaint, an email to your boss or a report. So quite formal. It would use similar language to the highly formal, but there might be some room for cliches or colloquialism, so a bit of everyday language, depending on the subject matter and audience. So an example might be a newspaper or newsletter, um, article, a press release or announcement, or a manual, an instruction manual. Uh, quite informal where it's a less serious subject matter, but the audience requires an element of formality. So it, an example could be a newspaper or blog review, an advert or a leaflet. So um, a newspaper, art, fun article about, um, I don't know, a celebrity um, event. It could be quite informal, but they would still have levels of an element of formality, such as using the correct punctuation and grammar. But the style might be slightly less in, um, less formal in that they'd use colloquialism. So more, they might have some more speech-like language in there. And highly informal, when you personally know the audience or the subject isn't serious. So an email, text or letter to a friend or a forum comment. So in, where it's highly informal, 
not only are you using colloquial or everyday language, speech-like language, um, you may also be using contractions, so that's it, um, and some um, less focus on the rules of grammar, punctuation and so on. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, moving on. So, but you need to remember that the levels of formality may change depending on the subject matter and the audience. So, a newspaper article, so we've said they could be slightly less formal. Um, so, so, examples here, a newspaper article about the rise in local crime should be more formal than that of um, a newsletter or newspaper film review. Okay, so the subject matter is um, dictating the formality there rather than the audience. So in the same newspaper or newsletter, the audience is the same, but because of the subject matter, the level of formality may change. So um, we've got two scenarios for each of these, which is more formal, which re requires more formal writing. So an email to your new boss about time off or an email to your long term boss asking about her holidays, which one would be more formal? An email to your new boss about time off. Good. Yeah. So they're the audience. You, you, uh, it's a new boss. You, you don't really know them very well. Um, you're probably not at the stage where you have a friendly chat yet or a friendly email. So yes, you would take and and you want them to agree to the time off as well. So you would be more formal. Okay. Yeah. Well done in the chat as well. So the next one, a forum comment on a new pop video or a forum comment on an article about council tax rises. Which one would be more formal? A forum comment on an article about council tax yes. rising. So the subject matter there is telling us that the um, article about uh, commenting on an article about council tax rises, that's a more serious um, subject, so it would have more formal writing. And a text describing how to cook a lasagna or a text teaching children how to cook cupcake so when it says a text it doesn't mean like a mobile phone text it means like a, a text a document a piece of writing so it could be um a magazine recipe or it could be in a recipe book but would um the recipe for lasagna for adults be more formal or a recipe for children be more formal So we're thinking about the audience here. Which one would require more formal writing? The test describing how to cook a lasagna. Yeah, so the, the recipe for adults would be more formal. It wouldn't be extremely formal, but the recipe for teaching children how to cook cupcakes is more likely to have maybe some top tips or, you know, some side uh, bars or uh, boxes with, um, I don't know, some informal language in like top tip, add some, um, add some chocolate to your icing or something like that. And um, 
perhaps some informal um, or less formal punctuation like double exclamation marks or things like that. So just to make it look more fun for the children. OK, so if you think with a, you, um, with a recipe for children, you're trying to persuade them that it's a fun activity that they'd like to do. Whereas a recipe for adults, they're more likely have to have gone looking for it because they thought, I want to cook a lasagna. Um, so they found that recipe online or in a recipe book. It's going to be more formal. It doesn't need to try and draw them in. So there'd be less um, informal punctuation and language and so on. Any questions about that? Okay, thanks, Lisa, for contributing via the chat. Um, tone choice. So along with the level of formality, you need to think about the tone. And these two are often linked. So should your tone be serious or fun? A serious article, whoever the audience is, will always be formal in nature. Highly impersonal and complex as well. So a serious article is formal, uh, often impersonal and using complex sentence structures. But a fun article might break a few rules. So you might see unusual text features like big, colourful headline, um, colloquial or everyday language more speech like and it might break a few um punctuation rules as well so you might think see things like a question mark with an exclamation mark or double doubling up <coughs> excuse me doubling up on punctuation like exclamation marks and question marks so is it optimistic or pessimistic positive or negative what's the message so an article on global warming, is it going to be an upbeat view of the future that um, these things could happen, but we can change it, let's do this? Um, or is it going to be a gloomy one that this is going to happen? Um, if we don't act now, it'll only get worse. So what um, tone are you taking, optimistic or pessimistic? And sarcastic or genuine so you need to be careful here using sarcasm it can be used in the right circumstances but you do need to be careful with that um so there's an example there the excellent service advertised on your website was nothing of the sort so they've put in quotation marks excellent service because they're being sarcastic because they're making a complaint. It wasn't excellent. It was nothing of the sort. OK, so, yeah, so your tone, serious or fun, is it optimistic or pessimistic? Is it sarcastic or genuine? So, again, those choices that you need to make when you know what your task is. So what tone are these extracts? So we've just got a small extract from a text. With the right funding, I believe the council can improve the condition of our once beautiful parts to their former glory. Regards, D. Rice. So is it optimistic, genuine, serious? So I would so the tone there is all of those, isn't it? So we have got regards there, which is formal, um, but it is optimistic um, that things can be changed, and it's also serious. We can see the formality, the seriousness of it. The um, it's a complex sentence or it's an extract. It's not even the beginning of the sentence. So we can see it must be a complex sentence, the length of it. 
Okay, so moving on. This film, or so-called mockumentary, is one in a long line of this genre, which I have to say has been done to death. So how do we, so where's the sarcasm? Which what shows us that there's some sarcasm in that? What punctuation shows us that there is some sarcasm in that extract? So I'm looking for some um, someone to tell me what what's the punctuation that's been used in that extract that shows us they are being sarcastic. Okay, so it's the speech marks around the word mockumentary. So by putting speech marks around it or inverted commas, they are showing us that they it they don't think it is a mockumentary. So called mockumentary. Okay, so the makers of this film have called it a mockumentary and the writer of this extract is being sarcastic about that. It's a mockumentary. It's, but the speech marks around it show their sarcasm. They don't really think that it is. Okay, we've also got this. Um, it's pessimistic. It's been done to death. Um, so they're pessimistic, they're very negative about it, um, and it's more, it's a serious sentence. Okay, the final one you'll love this new flavor milkshake. It comes in three, count them, three flavors chocoholic, nutty nut, and super straw. So it's fun. We can see, um, what can you tell me about this extract? What, what shows us that it is fun and optimistic? It's very informal, isn't it? What's, um, what's showing us that it's got that fun tone? What features can you spot? You love this new flavour mug. Yes, so they've highlighted the, uh, sorry, they've put in bold, the word love to emphasize it you love this new flavor milkshake what about the punctuation it's not too serious the punctuation yes. yeah so it's not too serious um if you look at right at the end We've got a triple exclamation mark. So, you know, it's it's dramatic. It's dramatic and fun. Um, yeah, so instead of strawberry, we've got strobe. So it's like you're talking to a friend. It's more fun and not formal. That's right. Well done, Lisa. Oh, oops. Okay. So we want to identify the register here, so the formality and tone. So what is the style of this text, this writing? Hi, Joe. Just wondering if you're coming out later tonight, mate. We're going to meet in the cafe on the square at seven. The table is booked at the restaurant for eight. I really hope you can make it. It's been too long. It'll be great, really good to catch up. We can't wait to hear about your new job too. Email or text to let me know. Hope to see you later. So we can see it's informal and fun. And but how do we know this? What what can you tell me about this text? So it looks like it's an email. 
and what can you tell me about it that shows us it's informal and fun? How it is punctuated. Yeah, excellent punctuation. Um, got some exclamation marks. Exclamation mark. What else? What else have they done that shows us it's informal and fun? So, anything about the language? Yeah, the language, yeah. So, what can you tell me about the language or the formality of the language, or not, as it may be? Can you give me any ex examples? No, from... the, we are going to meet in the cafe on the, the square. Yeah, so How... got, yeah. yeah, so we've got we're gonna. So we've got contraction instead of we are. Yeah. Got you, you, uh, we're. We've also got that um contraction. We've got that. Yeah, and it's other been examples so of that long. throughout. And we've got gonna instead of going to. Mm -hmm. Um. So yes, uh, Lisa. So in the chat, so we've got mates. So informal, colloquial language. Um, everyday speech like. Uh, also the too long mm. so adding all those extra zeros that's definitely informal and fun um anything else that you notice okay let's have a look at the list So the informal greeting, hi, hi Joe. Yeah. Um, the use of contractions and two with the many um O's on it. Uh, use uh, the use of slang. Pardon. Some sentences aren't complete. Yeah. So. Yeah. So the. It's it they're very short and simple, aren't they? They could be more complex. Um, the use of slang, so mate, gonna, and the unnecessary exclamation mark. So it's been too long. We've got an exclamation mark there. It's not really needed, but it's fun. It's informal. It doesn't always follow the rules exactly. Okay, so um, we've got another example here. Um, on the banks of the beautiful Truro River, Truro is a delightful city near the southwest coast with intriguing museums, fascinating galleries and enchanting river cruises. Visitors enjoy delicious food and wine experiences and the city is close to gorgeous beaches too. For breathtaking panoramas of the river and beyond, stroll along the footpaths and stop at Trelissic Gardens. The wide river is popular for fishing, boating, kayaking and river cruises. Truro is a great place to visit. We hope to see you soon. So it's formal and serious. Um, but it is optimistic and upbeat as well. So serious can be um, also optimistic. And we've got formal language and tone. The grammar and punctuation is correct. We don't have any contractions in there. So it's following the rules of grammar, punctuation, the more formal style. The is also... Um, the use of adjectives and interesting language, um, which indicates it's a persuasive text. So it seems like it is either um, from some tourist uh, information, so trying to persuade tourists to visit, or it could be a review, but I would say it's more formal. It's probably from some promotional material for the area okay so yeah it does have a friendly tone 
despite being formal. So we can have both. So for your writing, when you're doing your tasks, you'll be marked on your use of register to fully suit its audience and purpose. So the register is using the correct mix of all aspects of writing. So the language, the level of formality, the style, vocabulary, and use of supporting evidence. So we've looked at most of those, but let's have a look at supporting evidence oh, and specialist vocabulary. So supporting evidence and essential information. And this, your use of this will depend on the type, purpose and audience of the text you are writing. So we'll look at these types of writing on the left and decide what supporting evidence would be most appropriate. It could be supporting evidence or essential information. So that could vary from the time of an event or a quote from a source. So if you are emailing to apply for a job, what supporting evidence or essential information would you need to include? Work history. Yeah, your work history. Your Yeah, definitely. So let's have a look. Work history, your skills and abilities, mm -hmm. your qualifications, and what you're doing at the moment, your current role. Good. So an email to a friend about a night out. So what essential information will you need to include? The time and the places. Excellent, yeah. The arrangements, the times and place and so on. So a complaint about bad customer service. So what will you need to... Date and time of the Good. incident. Yeah, the date and time of the incident. Names of people involved. Excellent. So dates and times of incidents, an example of what happened and mm -hmm. the names of the people involved. An email to your boss about taking holidays. So what do you need to include? Your reason why you are taking the holidays. Yeah. And the dates. Yeah, the, the date and the reason why. Well done. A forum comment about dog fouling in the local park. So what uh, supporting evidence or essential information should you include? Your personal experience. Yeah. Yeah, so personal experience, other people's experiences and reasons why it might be happening. Okay, um, a newspaper article about rising house prices. So what uh, essential information or supporting evidence would you include in your article? Statistics. Yeah, figures, statistics, um, quotes and comments from people affected, uh, places. So where are, where are you talking about? Where are you talking? Where are these house price rises that you're talking about? And you could make comparisons about price rises over the year. So yeah, the figures, the postcodes. Yeah, well done. OK, so we're just carrying on here. So a blog film review. So what essential information or supporting evidence would you include in a film review? Mm 
the the film title. Yeah, the film title. The uh, the running time to the length of the film, the cast, the rating, and we could also include some quotes. A financial report. Facts and figures. Yeah. So you need to include facts and figures, any trends and patterns. Yeah. A recipe. So ingredients. what? Yeah. What essential information we need? Ingredients. Um, tips and hints. Um, the method. Yeah. Good. How to do it. Well done. A complaint letter to your MP about local traffic congestion. So examples. Where, when and why it's happening. Any statistics as well. Excuse me. So, a science article about a drop in the domestic bird population. You need statistics? Good. So, statistics, quotes, paraphrasing from relevant sources. So, you could, uh, yeah, quote and paraphrase from other articles or texts about the subject. Well done. And a theme park opening leaflet. Date. Yep. So, yeah, when is it opening? What date? The prices, mm -hmm. good. Um, and opening and closing times, yes. Um, what, yeah, the attractions, facilities, well done. Yeah, good. So specialist words, so the vocabulary you use. So you need to choose this depending on the task at hand. So depending on the task you are given. So look at the word groups and decide where you might use them. So we've got the word groups on the left and the choice of where you might use them on the right. So appalled, unacceptable, inappropriate would that be a job application music review an email to your boss about holidays a complaint letter to a restaurant a sales figures report or a guide to make a cabinet a complaint letter to a restaurant good yeah so a complaint letter Yeah. Um, in regards to qualification skills. So where my job we... application. Good. Oops. And um, excellent. Recommend. Disappointing. So the word recommend is important there. So a music review, mm -hmm. an email to your boss about holidays, a sales figures report or a guide to make a cabinet. A music review. Yeah, so recommend. You definitely need to include that word. I do recommend it or I don't recommend it. That's important if you're writing a review. Good. Um, trend, pattern, increased, in, decrease, as much as. Where would you see that vocabulary, those words? A report on sales figures. Excellent, yeah. Then next, 
Remember, always drill sore. A so guide on making a yeah. cabinet. Good. So if we've got a manual and instructions, a recipe, um, then that vocabulary we would expect to see then, next, um, after that, and so on. So the final one is um, an email to your boss about taking holidays. Find my mouse. Okay, so if I could, so polite for the period, stating the dates, and that you'd appreciate it. So it's very polite. So uh, we're on to our quiz. We're nearly finished for today. You should use an informal style when you want to be persuasive, write an email. You don't know which punctuation to use, or you know the audience well. So when do you use an informal style? Yeah, you know the person well. Thank you, Lisa, in the chat there. Good. So informal, when you know them well. When should you use a formal style for writing? So is it your... Uh, writing to your boss, to anyone you don't know well, your bank manager, or is it all of those? All of those. Yeah. Yep, yeah, good. Um, in writing, tone refer refers to the correct spelling, punctuation and grammar, the layout, the purpose or the way language is used to achieve an effect. So A, B, C or D. So the tone is D, the way language is used to achieve an effect. Okay. You've received an email from a friend. Which response is not appropriate? So remember you're writing back to a friend. Hey, it sounds like a plan. I'll meet you and the others later. Great, looking forward to seeing you later. I'm delighted to inform you that I will be available to attend this evening or hi, that's a good plan. I'll meet you at the cafe. So we do not use C, good. You've received a complaint from a customer, which response is not appropriate. We regret this order is late. The goods will be with us tomorrow when we will dispatch your order. We're sorry for the late delivery. The parcel will be with you on Friday. Please accept our apology for the delay. Your parcel will be posted today. We're sorry your order's late. Our supply is always slow. We'll get it to you ASAP. So which one would you not use? So you, you're writing as a business. So which response is not appropriate? Okay, so we've got three formal responses and one informal response. If you are a business responding to a complaint, do you think you should use a formal or informal response? Is D. Yes, yeah, D, because that's the informal one. Mm -hmm. If you were a business replying to a customer, 
then you wouldn't be using contractions like orders instead of your order is and um, ASAP. You wouldn't use that type of language, so it's D. Okay, so we finished with today. Remember, you can go online onto Moodle and do the knowledge checks. And um, on there, there'll be some information for today's session, so you can check and practice. Any questions before we finish for the day? Okay, well, have a good day, everybody, and I will see you in our next session on Saturday. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.